Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to divide polynomial functions. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have 4x squared minus 10x plus 6 is going to be divided by 4x plus 2. So first thing is, I hate this form, okay? I'm going to set it up in long division form, so watch. Bam! So to basically set this up, all you have to do is the term here to the right-hand side, all right, of that division symbol, is going to be now outside of your long division symbol. And whatever then on the left-hand side here will go inside that division symbol, okay? Now that we have that all set up, how do we approach the problem? What you want to do is first focus on your divisor. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm going to look at the coefficient and the x value of the highest powered x term. In other words, this is the only term in the divisor that has an x in it. So what I'm going to be looking to do is I'm going to be looking to take this term and then dividing it into the highest x term in my dividend. Okay? And the highest x term is going to be that one. So basically what we do is we take 4x squared, take your dividend value, divide it by your divisor, and that will help you find the quotient. What great language. So when we do this, what does that work out to be? It simply works out to be an x, okay? Whatever this is, this is going to be part of your quotient. The quotient always gets plugged in on the top of the long division symbol. So plug in an x. Now I don't care if you put the x here. I don't care if you put it here. It doesn't really matter, okay? It doesn't matter. I'm going to put it here. It doesn't make a difference. Now, after you do that, all you're going to do is write a subtraction symbol and then parentheses. Now you're going to take that quotient value found, take x, and now you're going to multiply it by each of these two terms here in your divisor. So first do x times 4x. That works out to be a positive 4x squared. Cool. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that x and then you're going to multiply it now by your 2. So what's x times 2? That's right positive 2x. And then there's nothing over here. So remember, 4x plus 2 is the same thing as saying 4x plus 2 plus 0. So what's x times 0? Well, it's just 0. So you would just plug in a little 0 over there. Okay? That's all you would need to do. All right. So now let's clean this up a little bit. Let's bring that back. All right. Now, before you start doing your math on in here, you're going to distribute that negative symbol. So negative sign goes to here, so that's going to be negative 4x squared. Then it's going to be a negative 2x, and then it's going to be a negative 0 or minus 0. Okay, so just erase all that, and everything here now becomes negative. Boom, erase that positive symbol, all right, and put in a little negative there, boom, and then same thing with that. Boom. Now do the math. 4x squared minus 4x squared is simply just cancels each other out. Negative 10x minus 2x is going to be a negative 12x. And then positive 6 minus 0 is just going to simply be a positive 6. Okay, great. Now, we do the process again. Okay, this is your new dividend. So what we're going to take, again, is the highest x term here in your divisor, which is 4x. And then divide it into the highest x term in your dividend, which is now negative 12x. So do the work on the side. Negative 12x, all divided by now, by, all divided by 4x. So what does this simplify down to? X is cancel, right? Negative 12 divided by 4, simply going to be a negative 3, okay? This is now your quotient value. Now, it's a negative sign, that's fine, but it's going to be a subtraction, right? Minus 3, okay? Minus 3, so it's X minus 3 now at the top. Cool. Now, same process. Take this negative 3, or the minus 3, multiply it by now 4X. What do you get? You get now a na- oh, 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 almost forgot my steps. First, start with the subtraction symbol and then put in your parentheses. Now, take the negative 3 and then multiply it by 4x, okay? And what's that going to work out to be? That's going to work out to be now a negative 12x. Great. Then take the negative 3 and multiply it by the positive 2, and that will work out to be negative 6. Okay, very good. Now all we have to do is distribute this negative sign, right? So I'm going to take the negative, I'm going to distribute it to this, good, and then I'm going to take it and distribute it to that, good. Now, when you, t when you have a double negative then, right, they all become positive. So just simply erase the parentheses, turn all, that neg all those negative signs into positives, okay? Turn the negative into the positive, baby. Good life advice, good life advice. Now, this, when you add these two together, that just cancels, right? And what's a 6 plus a 6? It's 12, okay? 
Now you're technically done here. You're technically done. And the reason why is because there's no more terms. So you have what's known as a remainder. Okay, but when you take this remainder, the remainder is 12, but not exactly because it's 12 divided by 4x plus 2. So now since this is a positive 12, okay, you will now plus put in a positive uh, 12, and then you have to put the divisor underneath it, 4x plus 2. And now this indeed, ladies and gentlemen, would be the final answer. This would be your quotient. Okay, this is known as the quotient. Now. To check yourself, make sure we don't make any mistakes, what you can do now is you can do a little simple check, all right? And you can check by simply making up an X value and plugging it in and seeing what happens. All right, hopefully it works out to be true. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this then, and I highly suggest you put this in fractional form just because it makes it a little easier. Don't be nervous with the word fraction, okay? Make fractions your friend, right? So much easier to turn your enemies into friends, right? Rather than keep them enemies. Then divide that now by the 4x plus 2. And that's then going to be equal to now the quotient you came up with earlier, which is x minus 3 plus now 12 over 4x plus 2. Okay, now I know this looks like a complicated mess, but don't worry about it. You're going to plug in any old x value you want. I don't know, choose an x value of 2. I kind of like to sh sh shy away from 0, although a 0 should work. You know, why don't we try 0? I shy away from it, but zero will work here. Let's make our life a little easier, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in four times zero squared minus then 10 times zero plus six, divided now by four times zero, four times zero plus two. That's gonna be equal to now zero minus three, zero minus three, plus then 12 over four times zero plus two. Let's see how this works. So anytime you multiply something by zero, they just go bye-bye. Right? So I'm getting rid of all the multiplications by zero. And now what's all that's left up here is six, and then that's gonna be over two, okay? And that better equal now, I have negative three, negative three plus then 12 over two, right? Let's start simplifying 12 over two. What's six over two? That's a three, great. Negative three, what's 12 over two? Six, right, six. And what's positive six minus a three? That's a three, ladies and gentlemen, and guess what? I know we're right, okay? And that's all there is to it. So what I know is that this quotient here is correct. You could always do that check anytime you want. You know, I would always recommend checking. You don't want to lose silly points on a test, right? It's easy to miss a sign here or there, all right? But just don't miss the signs everywhere. That's what happens when you start reading too many nursery rhymes to your children. You just start rhyming things out of the blue. That's what you have to look forward to. That rhymed as well. I gotta stop. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you can like and subscribe, that would help us out tremendously. We really wouldn't be here without you. So we appreciate all the support you've been showing us, all the wonderful comments we've been getting. And uh, to say the least, it motivates us to keep producing content. All right, so thank you very much. And look forward to helping you with more stuff. Check out our channel. We have thousands of videos out there. Not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well. We solve specific problems because you're going to see specific problems on your test. We talk through the concepts, through the problems. All right. Thanks for it again. And I look forward to helping you with more. Take care.